Hello and welcome to this session at Pass Virtual Summit 2020. Thank you for uh, joining me at this session. Uh, this session is about aggregations and composite model, um, two important uh, features of Power BI that can help each other in building a Power BI solution, which is scalable, works with big data, huge size of data sets, and it is also performing really fast. Uh, an analytics solution for uh, big size of the data using Power BI. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm Reza Rad. Uh, before uh, we start, let's go through this uh, part first. Uh, if you haven't uh, joined any of your local user groups, any of past SQL Sager days, uh, PASS as an organization has many things to offer as learning opportunities for uh, members, um, you can become a member um, as a paid membership, I guess, or you can even join a lot of free events that are local or uh, through webinars and many other platforms available for you. Pass Summit is only one of the ways to engage with Paths. Pass, uh, there are many other ways as well. Uh, remember, please, to do the session evaluation. That would help me and many other speakers to understand what are areas that we have done good and what are areas we haven't. Um, about me, I'm Reza Rad. I'm a, a Microsoft uh, MVP and a regional director. I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand. I'm a, a Power BI consultant. I do Power BI training and consulting uh, a lot of times. I have written some books on Power BI, uh, which uh, some of them are free available. You can go to the Radicat website and download them and uh, learn a lot of tips and tricks from Power BI about them and some of them uh, are available in other platforms. Uh, there is one specifically about Power BI architecture which is kind of like related to the topic we are going to talk about today. If you have any questions later on about any of the topics I'm going to talk about here, uh, feel free to reach out to me later on and uh, ask your questions. I'll be more than happy to get your questions through my email, social media or any other channels. Uh, you can reach out to me. Uh, now, starting to talk about Power BI. Power BI is a great analytics platform. A lot of demos you see around uh, Power BI is like super fast. When you go to a presentation about Power BI, when I present something about Power BI to, uh, to public, everything works really fast. Everything is super fast because the data is important in Power BI. Power BI is uh, importing data in an in-memory storage engine, which is much faster than querying the actual database. So you get that and you see Power BI is like super fast, it's exciting, you, you go and start working with it, but then you realize that you have a really large data set, your tables are so big, you have petabytes of data, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less, but it is so big that you cannot fit it in one Power BI file. Sometimes you are limited because of the licensing limitations, like you are, you are using Power BI Pro, you have like one gigabyte of space for your Power BI models, um, or you are using premium, but still your premium capacity is not that big to cover uh, the amount of um, memory you want or resources you want for one Power BI file, or you are using Power BI report server and you have two gigabyte uh, limitation. So you are kind of limited with what you can fit inside a Power BI file. Your large data set probably can't fit it, fit within it, right? So that, that doesn't work. Then, then you'll ask around, you'll go uh, about what other things you can do, what are uh, things that others did to get that solution working, and you'll find that there is also something called direct query. And that, that looks really good thing because you say, well, why should I copy or duplicate my data from the source system into this in-memory stor storage? Why Power BI don't query that actual database system itself? Because data is already there, right? So that's, that's direct query and that looks like a really good solution to implement for your case, especially because you have a really large data set. But then when you actually go and implement it, you realize that this is really slow. This is nothing compared to demos that you have seen about Power BI, nothing compared to all of those interesting examples that you have seen about Power BI. Direct query is not like those. It's really slow. Uh, and it's like you can't really get it working. Uh, then you might got to this point that you've heard about something called composite mode. 
Now, this is not a really new technology in Power BI, new, new feature in Power BI. This has been in Power BI for like almost two years now. Um, but it is really useful. It combines uh, the power of direct query with import and it gives you something really special. So we might heard about it and say, well, what that is, how that can help me. And that is what this session is about. This session is about helping you to show you what are things you can do with direct query and import together combined called composite model, how this can help in having a solution that is scalable. You have like um, many rows of data and still it's performing really fast. So I'll go through that with some examples with you. Now to understand this, first you need to understand that uh, we have like two modes of connections in Power BI at least because there are like more than these. We have also um, like live connection, but the, the two modes that we are going to talk about right now in this example is direct query on one side and uh, import in the other side. Import is good for the speed. When you import your data set into Power BI, it's like performing super fast. Everything is fast. Uh, on the other hand side, import has limitation. You don't have like an unlimited uh, size. You have a limited size and you have to always refresh your data set to get up-to-date data. So it's not fresh. It's not good for big models, for huge models. Uh, and direct query is good for that. Direct query is good for huge models and data freshness. Import is good for query performance. There was at some point, like about two years ago, that Microsoft came with this idea of combining the good things of these two together and coming up with something called um, composite mode. Composite mode is basically direct query and import combined together. You'll get the data freshness, you'll get the big model, you get the uh, you get the good good performance of your data all within one model. How this is going to work? Uh, imagine we have a, a report like this. This is a Power BI report. It has like four or five different visuals. This is actually six visuals, in fact. I have six different visualizations. If I'm using this connected to a data source in a direct query mode, the result is uh, slow. Why? Because every one of these queries is sent to the data, every one of these visuals is sending a query to the data source. So in fact, it is actually sending six queries to the data source. It makes it really slow. Imagine I have a database table with trillion rows of data. It will make it really slow to return something, right? So the idea of import and direct query is that because your tables are so big, you keep them direct query. But in your model, not every table is big. Not every table is huge. You have small tables, you have big tables. Uh, if you just do the import, that means you are importing your small tables as well as big tables like a table such as sales, which might be millions of rows, hundreds of millions of rows, you import that as well as a table like date, which might be only 7,000 rows. Uh, direct query the same. You are keeping the data in the source regardless of the size. Uh, size. If it is a sales table with hundreds of millions of rows, you'll keep it in direct query, which looks fine. But for a date table, which is really small, you don't really need to do that. The idea of composite mode is to combine these, have some of the tables imported, some of the tables direct query. Those tables that are smaller, you'll keep them imported. Those tables that are bigger um, in terms of size, you'll keep them uh, in the source as a direct query. Uh, now, I'm going to show you how this is going to work first. Uh, now, this demo that I'm showing to you is actually a demo that Christian Wade from Microsoft Power BI, the principal program manager of Power BI team, actually presented in some uh, sessions examples. You see that this is trillion rows of data and how fast this is working just with clicking and dra dragging, dropping these different um, uh, values on the visuals. Everything is working super fast. You can't believe that this is working on trillion rows of data. You can even uh, right click on a value, drill through to detailed row and look at the detailed result. So this is this is performing really fast and behind the scene is working on a Spark, um, H, uh, Spark cluster to, uh, to keep those information. But how this is going to work with this size of data? The um, 
the whole um, solution is relying on, of course, composite model to combine direct query and uh, import data together, plus aggregation. Aggregations is the heart of uh, making your Power BI solution fast. Not just for scenarios with direct query, with any scenarios. Even if you have all your data imported into Power BI, you can still get a really good uh, result out of it when you have aggregation beside it. So how does it work? Um, and that is where the rest of this session is about. I'm going to explain how you can have an aggregation in your model and how this plays with other tables together. Now, uh, consider this example. This is a famous AdventureWorks sample data set. I have a sales table here in the middle. Now, imagine this is a huge table. In this case, it's not because I'm limited to the size that my machine can handle, of course. Uh, but imagine this is a table with trillion rows of data, hundreds of millions of rows of data, anything. This is a big table, right? And the rest are most likely dimensions, small dimensions. Right. At the moment, I can just get them all using a direct query connection, right? And when I get all using a direct query connection, as I mentioned to you before, this makes the report super slow because the problem would be that um, would be that every uh, every visual will send a query to the data source. So what I'm going to do is to look at one of these visuals. For example, take this visual into the consideration. This is a visual that has sales amount, the value, and the x-axis here is, um, is the year, calendar year, basically here. Um, I'm looking at the sales amount by the year. Even if this is coming from a table with trillion rows of data, I'm not really lo looking at every single row in that table. I'm looking at an aggregated view of this. And this aggregated view is giving me... Uh, basically like a table with five rows, because I have like five years here, and their value, like two columns, basically. Two columns, five rows. I can pre-aggregate this table previously. I can do that aggregation. I can do that using SQL queries or views or group by or doing that in Power Query or DAX, any other ways that you know. I can do that aggregation. After doing the aggregation, then I can... Uh, easily query data from that aggregated table, like this. So instead of this visual querying all the way from this data source table, which might be really big, I just query that from this aggregated table. And aggregated table is a small table. In this case, it's like five rows, two columns. It's just like 10 values, 10 integer values. Probably that is like uh, 40 bytes altogether, right? Really a small. Uh, and, and that works really, really fast. I set this table as imported and everything works fast as long as I'm looking at that visual. But then if I look at other visuals, this story would be, would be different. But let's first look at how this table is working. So the, uh, the secret source is to create aggregated table. That is your solution. That is your key to make your Power BI faster. You have to go and build aggregated tables in Power BI. Now, I'm going to show you how to build this step by step. The very first step is to create that aggregated table. Now, this aggregated table can be created in many different ways. You can create it in um, SQL Server. Uh, most of you are SQL professionals, so you can write a SQL query using group by or any other methods to aggregate it. You can use SSIS to run it and aggregate it, or you can have just like a simple store procedure that aggregated store it as a view or something like that. You can have Power Query to aggregate it. DAX has uh, many functions to do that, group by, summarize, uh, many of those functions you can use. Now, in this example, I'm going to show you the Power Query way because everything here is uh, Power BI, mm, demo based i'm doing that with power query so before uh, starting that let me show you the example file i've got here this is a power bi file connected using direct query to the um, sql server database backend on my machine and that database is the adventureworks database this is my file it has these four five tables as you can see here 
and as you can see down at the top at the bottom right it shows me that this is a direct query storage mode if I go to the left hand side I won't be able to see actually any data tab there should be a data tab in between I can't really see the data because everything is direct query and even if I hover on these I'll see that in the description of these tables it tells me that these are all direct query so everything is direct query and that basically means that every visual I build here is querying the data source um, I'll bring SQL profiler here just to capture these queries now you might have some other better ways to capture queries sent to the database my SQL knowledge is a bit rusty so I'm using the old methods I used to use when I was a SQL developer uh, I'm tracing the queries sent to the database if you don't have SQL Server, data, SQL Server background and uh, this is a tool that you can trace some of the queries sent to the database so I'm actually monitoring that database uh, right now and if I come here start with looking at uh, for example fact internet sales table and I drag and drop the sales amount into here you see this takes a little bit of time it's not a big data set actually this is like 60,000 rows I'm just using that as a sample imagine this is a big database uh, and it represents the result here when I go to SQL profiler I can see that there has been queries sent to the data set here it is so a query sent to the data set and uh, this is selecting actually some of the sales from from a table right? now I can uh, start slicing and dicing this data and see what's going to happen with that like for example from date table I'll bring calendar year as the axis and as soon as I do that this will come up with some other queries here um, that has calendar year and some of the sales now uh, if you are coming from database background this might not be the uh, most beautiful SQL code ever written this looks quite ugly but but at the end of the day the point is that every visual here in Power BI will send a query something like that to the database when it is direct query Right? And you can imagine in a page how many visuals, like five, six, seven visuals, that would make it slow. So we are going to work on an aggregated table solution for this now. Let's, let me go and pause this one and clear this too. Um, stop it, in fact. Now I'm going to build my aggregated table, deleting this visual too. Um, I can build my aggregated table in Power Query. As I said, you can do, do it everywhere. I do it in Power Query because um, this is a tool that I have just right in front of me right now. Uh, now, my aggregated table should be an imported table. Every other table in this model is right now a direct query. Now, to show you that you can have an imported table um, where other tables are direct query, I just create a new blank query here. I say this is equal to one. So this basically just returns one value. I'm going to call this sales ag. This table, in fact, is not really a, um, a table including data. I just created a table because it is not sourced from a direct query source. If I go and say close and apply, this would be imported into the model. And when it becomes imported, it comes up with this message that you'll have the potential security risk because part of your data is imported, part of it is direct query. Uh, I just go ahead with that. This loads the sales ag table in my model. When I hover on it, I see that this is import where all other tables are direct query. This one is import. And at the bottom right corner, you see that the storage mode is now changed to be mixed, which means the composite model. Composite model means that you can have import data and direct query together uh, beside each other. Now I see the data tab in the left hand side. For all of these tables it would be like not showing me anything because it's direct query except for sales ag which I have just like one record one column there. Right so this is how you can build a composite model really simple but in fact it's not what we want we have to actually work on that aggregated table to make it aggregated version of the sales table and that is what I'm going to do I'll go to the home table 
uh, to the home tab to the transform data and I'll start building this. Now this table is going to be aggregated version of the sales table. So what I'm going to do is to first reference it from the sales table. You can do that in Power Query using just this. So I say this is equal to fact internet sales. This is like referencing this table from that table. I'll have all the columns, all the rows, everything from that table exactly. Then I'm going to do some uh, some aggregations here and the way that I do my aggregations is that I'll start with uh, these columns, the order date key, the customer key and product subcategory key. You select those columns that you want to group the rest of the table based on that and then right click group by kind of simple group by operation it tells me that these are the three columns I have selected for grouping and then I can choose what columns I want to do the uh, the aggregation based on so the aggregation columns I'll do is like this so uh, you choose what aggregation you want to have let's say I want some of the sales amount and you can call this column anything now I can call it like sales amount sum but in fact, you can call it just sales amount. This is in fact saying that the sales amount aggregated version of that table, I called it this. Um, I'll do some this time for unit price. Unit price sum. I'll add one for count of rows. And I use unit price count when you have count it doesn't really matter count of which uh, column but i'll just add one more anyway so these are two count columns two count rows and two some of the sales aggregated or grouped by based on these three fields order date key customer key and product subcategory key when i click on ok this is the aggregated result this is how easy it is to group by fields in a table in Power Query. Uh, but you can do it in SQL Server or in any other places. Now, if I say close and apply, this table will be loaded exactly as I created it. So this is aggregated data. This is imported. When I hover on it, you see it's import, but the actual fact internet sales and any other tables are direct query. Now what this means, this means that I can go ahead and build a visualization. Let me start watching the queries again. Um, from the sales ag table, I'll bring this field, sales amount sum. And because this is coming from the aggregated table, uh, an aggregated table is import data, nothing is here. Everything is great from the data source. But if I move it aside and if I do it this time by the sales amount from fact internet sales table, this time it sends query to the data source, right? So there's a difference. The direct query one is sending query to the data source, the aggregated one doesn't. Now, what about uh, what about querying this based on other fields? Because right now this is just from the Ag table itself. I don't normally want the total sum. I want this to be sliced and diced by product, by customer, other things that I have, those that I have actually created this aggregation based on. So what I'm going to do is to make sure I have relationship between these tables. Now this is my model before aggregation created. This is my model. I had my sales table, I had the product subcategory category. It's not really a star schema model, but anyway, we are working with it. Uh, connected to customer table, promotion table, date table. Now I have created this sales ag table. As you see, it's not connected anywhere. I'm going to connect it to my date table. Now, when I go and create a connection to the date table, this time here would be based on the date key and order date key. So this creates one-to-many relationship based on, based on that. 
Now this means that as a result I can slice and dice the data of that table, the ag table, based on the date. So let me capture again any queries sent to the data source. I'll start with sum of sales amount, no queries sent to the data source. Then dim date, calendar year, I use that as an axis and this in fact sends a query to the data source. Um, so my sales, that was actually the big value coming from the big fact internet sales is now imported, but still my dimension is not. My dimension is in direct query source, so then this would cause some issues because every time I use that dimension, I, it sends a query to the database. What is the point, right? It still makes it a little bit slow. So what I can do is to change this to become imported, change this date table also to become imported. However, that is where the tricky part comes in. Um, if I change this to become imported, then how this would react when connected to a direct query table, which is the sales table. This table is connected to both. So that is why we need a little bit different storage mode here. So I'll go back to my slides. We created the aggregated table. This is our ag table. And now the next step in creating the aggregation table or creating that whole aggregation, the next step is to take care of the storage mode. The storage mode of import is clear, direct query is clear. We have a dual storage mode. What is the dual storage mode? The dual storage mode is telling me that if I am connected from an imported table, to a dual table, this table would act like it is imported, like sales ag and date table. That dual table, however, if it works with a direct query table, it acts like it is direct query source. So it is actually a direct query table that we have a copy of that imported in the model. That is how it is working. One table can be acting as import or as direct query in two different scenarios. That is how dual uh, mode is working. Now, uh, to set that, that's a really easy setup uh, to set that dual storage mode. For example, here for the date table, I can select that. This is where you can change the storage mode. Uh, I'll change it to dual. It come up with this message that if you do that, it will increase the size of your model because it will create a copied version of that into the memory. Now, date table is a small table. It doesn't really hurt to have a copied version of that in memory. So now, when I have done this, if I go to build another visualization and running this again, this time when I say, give me sales amount sum, and calendar year, there should not be any query sent to the data source, which is of course correct because this table, which is dual storage mode, acts like imported when it is combined with the imported data and everything works fine. Now I should do the same for other dimensions around it, which I'm going to do just right now. So I have two other dimensions to create relationship based on. One is the subcategory table. And I need to make this dual. Every table that is connected to a direct query and imported at the same time, this should be converted to dual. Now, the thing is that when you convert the table to dual, any other table that has one too many relationship to that table would be also dual. Uh, like product category in this case would be dual as soon as I make product subcategory, but not the product because that is like many to one relationship here. So that's that, and I do one more for the customer table. I'll make this a little bit nicer to see what it looks like because it might be a little bit hard to understand with so many tables. 
So I'll bring these that are only related to the fact table down. Like the product table, these that are related to the act table, I'll bring them in the sides. This is the act table, this is the customer table. Let me connect that customer table as well to this. And as a final stage, I'll make customer customer table, dim customer table, also jewel. Okay, so that's pretty much it with relationship of this with the three dimensions around it. You see subcategory, date, and customer. And this also means that any dimensions coming from uh, others with one to many relationship, like here, category, and geography would act the same. So I can go and do a visualization this time. Let me start this again. This visualization can be sales amount sum. Everything is clear from memory. Uh, then by calendar year. Still everything is in from memory like for example from product category, I can bring that as a legend. And as you see, still everything is from memory. These are actually some other queries. These are not those related to the Power BI desktop at this stage. Okay, so everything works fine. Then what is the next step? Why should we require a few other steps after this? Everything seems to be working. The next step is actually this process of setting storage mode is done. Um, so it is important to set up the right storage mode, like import when it is important needed, when direct query when direct query is needed, and dual for the scenarios that it is connected to both. So when you set up that storage mode, after that setup, then the next one would be making sure that this process is seamless for the user. Right now, this is our model. This is how it looks like. I have one import table, my ag table every table that is kind of related to that is kind of dual storage because they are also connected to the sales which is direct query and some tables that are only related to the sales table they are direct query now the next step is to set the aggregation function why that is important we don't want user to go and select the sales amount from uh, from ag table to trigger the imported data uh, because if they go and select it from the fact table then it will bring it as a direct query result we want them to go and get only one sales amount wherever it is in the sales table in the fact sales table but that behind the scene uses the aggregation we have created we want this process to be seamless we don't want uh, to have confusion to different types of tables. How this is possible? We need to set up some aggregations. We need to tell Power BI that this table we have created is an aggregated table. Power BI has something called ag aggregation awareness. It is aware, it, it can be aware of the aggregation. In some other um, Microsoft tools, such as analysis services, we don't have that, so that means you have to write it in your DAX statements that if, for example, this is selected to that, if this is selected to that. But in Power BI, we have that interesting uh, aggregation awareness. How does it work? How does it work? I'll right click on my ag table and I choose manage aggregations. This is a place that I would tell Power BI that this table is actually an aggregated table. The way that I can do it is I should choose the aggregation applied on every one of these fields in this table. So the customer key is actually grouped by in the fact internet sales table based on the customer key field. Same for the order date. You have to choose exactly what this representative is. So this is grouped by of that field. And product subcategory key is in the fact internet sales group by of product subcategory key you are actually telling power bi that this is my configuration now for the sum functions this is the sum of the fact internet sales 
sales amount. You are telling to Power BI that whenever someone wants some of the sales amount, I already have a sum of sales amount here. Or same for unit price, sum of the fact internet sales unit price if I can find it yep here it is and for counts really it doesn't matter which column you are getting the count but just for simplicity I select something here let's say sales order line number here for discount and for this one also I'll just get the unit price itself for the count Okay, so after you set up all of these at uh, their proper aggregations, and the purpose of this is to tell Power BI that this is summarization of this. You should read it that way. Um, then I say apply all. You'll see a message here saying that after doing this action, this table will be hidden. Uh, and that is right, because um, when you have like two tables, it's quite confusing. Should I get data from the aggregated table or should I get it from the actual table? This will become hidden acting behind the scene. So apply all. You see that that table is gone. I don't have that ag table here anymore. If I go to the relationship diagram, I see it over here. This is hidden, as you see. It's hidden with all of the columns here. Now, uh, we are going to test it and seeing how Power BI reacts to normal actions in the fact internet sales table fact internet sales table as you see is a direct query table but what is going to happen right now is that i'm going to grab and uh, drag and drop uh, drag and drop fields from the uh, direct query table into the report but in fact it triggers the query from the imported data starting from sales amount dragging and dropping here sales amount and no queries sent to the data source. I'm still tracking, but nothing sends to the data source. Then I say, let's also bring something such as what were other aggregations. I think we had unit price as well. So I can say, give me unit price. I can even change it to a chart that uh, I can use something as a line value, let's say unit price count of that as a line value with any of these actions no queries sent to the data source i'll bring calendar year into the axis still no queries sent to the data source so in fact this is a very seamless process from the user end user is working with the huge table with that trillion rows of data in that table here however uh, Power BI is querying data from the imported as long as there is something imported available. But as soon as, for example, I remove it and bring something which is not uh, in list of our, our, our aggregations, such as promotion, for example, I bring that. So as soon as we do that, this will send a query to the data source. So still, there are actions that would send queries to the data source, but not those actions that can be covered with the, uh, with the aggregated table. So now let's go back to the rest of slides. So the next stage after doing this is to uh, have layers of aggregation because uh, having one aggregated table is good, but it is probably good for one visual, two, three visuals. It's not good enough for your entire report. You'll probably have uh, data sliced and diced by many other fields. And that is why having another layer of aggregation is good. Uh, then having another layer of aggregation. These, these acts such as like uh, accumulative layers of aggregation. Uh, consider this scenario. I can uh, create another uh, aggregated table. Now this aggregated table can be aggregated based on some other columns and tables. Here you see that I have it based on the three tables that I had before, customer, date, subcategory, but also promotion, right? So this would be a bigger table than the, uh, than the table that I had for the sales act. This is a bigger table, it is related to more columns, right? Now uh, this, uh, this means that I can have this table 
querying uh, this visual querying data from a table like a smaller sales ag but when it is not uh, when it cannot be provided uh, the, with a re good result from that it queries from another aggregated table uh, and you can have as many as layers you want like that right so I'll go uh, and show you how this looks like I have a uh, another Power BI file which I'm going to open here so closing this one opening another Power BI file and in this Power BI file I have exactly that model plus one new aggregated table which is this time aggregated by promotion as well as those other fields as well Okay, so you can see it in this, <clears throat> you can see it in this view here, but if I go to the model tab, I can show to you that I have my sales act table, and then I have another act table, <clears throat> that is sales uh, and promotion, some other things, sorry about my drawing, <laughs> and promotion, some other uh, things and it is related to promotion as well as few other tables and it is hidden as well so this means that if I go and monitor queries coming here again this time I can get sales amounts by let's say something again from the date table everything is it from the memory even this time if I get something from promotion still everything comes from memory because my second aggregated table can cover that so how do you tell then to Power BI that uh, when we have uh, more than one aggregation which one should be queried first and that is the important question to do that we have something called precedence setup when you right click on a table and when you say manage aggregation at that point you can actually tell to power bi that which aggregation should take higher priority the one with highest precedence number that takes the highest priority so uh, when sales ag is one that means visuals first be first would be checked with this table this is highest category, highest precedence. If they can be provided with the answer with this, they will be. Otherwise, the next precedence aggregations is this one, precedence zero, uh, and that uh, would be the next one. If that one doesn't still have it, then it would be the actual direct query. So the whole process would be like this. Precedence it up, you set up the highest uh, value for the one that you want to get the highest priority. Uh, visuals will always look at that first if they cannot be answered by that then the second one then the third one you can have like layers of aggregation seven layers eight layers this depends on uh, on again your size of uh, the size of your power bi model limitations and things like that but always imagine that these aggregated tables are smaller than the actual fact tables um, so as a result this would help the performance and if none of them can be answering the uh, the questions then the actual direct query will be used for that right so this whole process of precedence is quite important because you need to make sure that the one uh, that is used for uh, better result faster aggregation smaller table used first and then the rest now uh, Aggregation can come in patterns. We basically just talked about the idea of aggregation. We haven't talked about patterns. Like, for example, you can create aggregations on a timely basis. Time is one of the most important things you can consider to create aggregation based on. For example, you can have aggregations uh, quarterly, yearly, weekly, daily, if you have like even time uh, portions not just date time portions like hourly minutes like let's say half an hour thing things like that there are other ways you can do aggregations you can have an aggregated data for your historical information your recent data to be uh, detailed there are 
different patterns you can do that. And um, there are some articles around Phil Simark, Microsoft Power BI CAD team member, principal uh, program manager in the CAD team, uh, has a really good series of articles about um, about aggregations patterns, like different ways you can use it. Uh, and there are some other good resources around as well. I highly encourage you to have a look. When I talk about aggregations, uh, some uh, there are always some questions about it, uh, which I address it in this section, frequently asked questions. Uh, one of the questions is that, well, this feature of manage aggregation and things like that is a Power BI feature. What about analysis services? In analysis services, I don't have it. That feature is called aggregation awareness. Yes, we don't have it in analysis services, but that doesn't mean you cannot use aggregations. You could have used aggregation even without that ability in Power BI. The way that it works is that you still cre create your aggregated tables, but this time you just go and write a simple if statement, switch state, switch expression in your uh, DAX expression. Like for example, if it is filtered by this, use the aggregated table. If it is filtered, if it is not filtered by that, if it is filtered by something else, use the actual table. So you define all the precedence, everything inside your DAX expression. It would be all writing DAX statements. Um, is there any point of having aggregation if everything is imported? Yes. You should not consider aggregation only for direct query sources. When the data is imported in Power BI, normally it is fast. However, even if in a scenario that the data is imported, even in a scenario that let's say you have a big, uh, let's say spec server um, or good premium capacity that can cover like gigabytes of size of a Power BI model, this might still be a little bit slow because you are querying the big table every time. Instead of that, you can have aggregated table. So even if your main table is imported, you can have aggregated tables. But the thing is that the aggregation awareness, again, is not understanding those. In those scenarios, I would call it more advanced scenarios, you need to write these into DAX statements, which is absolutely simple. It's just a simple if statement. If statements that you can use in DAX can be using functions such as is filtered in a scope, thing, things like that to make sure that is it filtered by something and then based on that refer to an aggregation. Would all your DAX calculation works? This depends on the type of your, your calculation. Sometimes you use a calculation using a function that passes some of the filters or ignores some of the filters, such as all some, some other functions. So you need to be careful about how you use your DAX calculations. Aggregations should be kind of related with DAX at some points to have a really good real world impact. And one of the last thing, how do I determine what tables are good for aggregations? Well, um, there are different ways. One way is to first look at your existing report. You see that you have like visuals, this is sales by calendar year. So calendar year probably is a good example. Sales by customer education category. That can be another good example. Looking at the visuals in your table, that gives you an idea of what aggregations should be. Um, monitoring the queries coming from the, uh, from the um, users is also important. Now, in analysis services, we can capture logs and see uh, queries sent to the source. In Power BI, that is a little bit different. It's not like by design or by default available, but there are some ways to, get, to capture it. Uh, so that these are good ideas to create that aggregation, either from the existing database or using that um, kind of log or something like that to fetch it. In general, every uh, demos I showed to you, I have written blog articles about it, video, um, make sure to check out uh, our website, Radicat website. We have many uh, free articles and videos about Power BI. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if there is an aggregation scenario you want to implement that you are not aware of, please let me know. And thank you for attending this session. Um, my contact information is here. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Thank you.